Hello anatomy students! In this video I'm going to explain the major arteries of the pelvis and legs and the direction of blood flow through them. The abdominal aorta ends near the upper part of the pelvic cavity as it divides into the right and left common iliac arteries near L4, that's the fourth lumbar vertebra. Remember the word iliac refers to the ilium, the superior part of the hip bone. These arteries supply the pelvic muscle wall, pelvic organs, external genitals, and the lower limbs. Both of the common iliacs have the same route of blood flow through the right and left leg respectively. For our tour, I'm going to follow the path of blood flow through the right leg. The common iliacs branch into the internal and external iliac arteries. The internal iliacs are the major arteries of the pelvis. They branch near the sacroiliac joint, which is where the sacrum and ilium join together, and then descend into the pelvis. They supply the pelvic muscle wall, pelvic organs, the buttocks, external genitals, and the medial muscles of the thigh. The external iliac arteries are the larger branches of the common iliacs, descending along the psoas major muscles and become the femoral arteries as they enter the thigh. They supply the lower abdominal wall and lower limb. The femoral arteries are continuations of the external iliacs as they enter the thigh. They begin moving down the thigh superficially, then run deep to the sartorius muscle toward the medial aspect of the thigh. As they reach the distal thigh, they end at the posterior knee. The femoral arteries supply the muscles of the thigh. That includes the quadriceps, adductors, and the hamstrings femur, and ligaments and tendons around the knee joint. The popliteal arteries are continuations of the femoral arteries as they enter the posterior space behind the knee. They then divide into the anterior and posterior tibial arteries. The popliteal supply the muscles of the distal thigh, skin of the knee region, muscles of the proximal leg, knee joint, femur, patella, tibia, and fibula. The anterior tibial arteries branch off and descend from the popliteals into the anterior muscle compartment of the leg. They and their branches supply the tibia, fibula, anterior muscles of the leg, dorsal muscles of the foot, the tarsal bones, metatarsals, and phalanges. The dorsalis pedis arteries, also called the dorsal arteries of the foot, are continuations of the anterior tibial arteries at the ankles. They supply the dorsal muscles of the foot, located on the dorsum, or top of the foot, and the tarsal bones. The arcuate arteries, branch off the dorsalis pedis arteries on the dorsum of the foot and run laterally over the bases of the metatarsals. The name arcuate means arched or bowed, which describes the shape of these arteries. They supply the tarsal bones and metatarsal bones. Branching from the arcuate arteries are the dorsal metatarsal arteries, which run along the metatarsals and then branch into the dorsal digital arteries, which move into the toes. The posterior tibial arteries are direct continuations of the popliteals and descend into the posterior muscle compartment of the legs deep to the soleus muscles. They then bend forward to the plantar, or lower surface of the feet, at the soles giving rise to the medial and lateral plantar arteries. They and their branches supply the posterior and lateral muscle compartments of the legs, 
the plantar muscles of the foot, tibia, fibula, tarsals, metatarsals, and phalanges. And lastly, the fibular or perineal arteries arise from the posterior tibials in the upper third of the leg and course laterally as they descend and supply the lateral compartment of the leg.